Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, select board of the town of Sunderland. Please call to order at uh, 637 on our newly working timepiece. It's two minutes fast. Yeah, so we think it's working. <laughs> uh, it's November 15th, 2021. And we are now in session. First order of business is the approval of the minutes of November 1st. I motion we approve them. Second. A yeah, motion made and seconded to approve the <clears throat> minutes as presented for November 1st, 2021. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And under new business, we have the personnel committee compensation and recommendations. Crystal? Yes. Are you going to give us a report or is Jeff going to give us a report? I think Jeff's got it right there in front of him. Sure. Jeffrey, shoot so away. So the personnel committee has put together sort of the outline of a, a plan and wanted to hear back from the select board at this preliminary stage to understand if they should be moving forward or um, if there are parts of the plan that, that the select board would prefer that they revisit or reconsider. Um, Essentially, there are three main components. Um, one is the annual cost of living adjustment. Um, and the personnel committee would look at the formula that had been adopted in 2009, um, which was the prior year's Social Security COLA, the average of the prior year's Social Security COLA, and the prior 12 months consumer price index um, for the northeastern region, um, and then also look at the colas being offered by peer communities and the colas in negotiated uh, contracts as well, union contracts. The second piece is a wage adjustment for employees, for non-contract, non-union employees with 10 or fewer years of service. And the proposed approach would basically look at the salary survey that we had done, um, take the minimum and the maximum of the range for a given position, divide it by 10, and then that would be the, um, the annual wage adjustment. And they were also talking about tying it to uh, performance evaluation so if for example the performance evaluation was a scale of one to five five being the best um, somebody who received an evaluation of five would get the full amount somebody who received an evaluation of three would get half the amount and somebody who received a one on their evaluation probably shouldn't be working here anymore but yeah. would, would um, I guess receive nothing in, yeah. for the wage adjustment. And then for those employees that have been here 10 years or longer, they were talking about not giving wage adjustments, but sort of an annual um, longevity bonus or, you know, um, sort of a, a flat amount um, for those employees. And so, just based on some, some, I wanted to get an idea of what the budget impact of that yeah. plan would be. So I, I made some assumptions um, and did a little bit of a calculation. The assumptions were a 2% COLA every year, um, a longevity payment of $500, and um, every, every employee receiving a three on their evaluations. Um, other assumptions were that there wasn't any turnover because if you get a new employee, they have zero years of service, that would obviously affect that year's budget, um, and that the hours for each position remain consistent. And so based on that, the total impact ranged from a low of about $18,000 um, in the next fiscal year to a high of about 20,600. 29. In, yeah, in 2029. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of that was the colas, that was about 12 to 14,000. The wage adjustments 
We're 30, about 3,700 for the first couple of years, going down to 2,400, and then longevity as people get older and assuming there's no turnover, longevity increases because pe more people hit that 10 years and wage adjustment decreases over that time. So that's probably not 100% accurate, but yeah. it gives some mm. idea of um, what we'd be looking at. But it's in the range of 18 to $20,000 a year. And then I, I should just mention again, this is if everybody got a three on the scale of one to five. So obviously there would be some with twos and fours and kind of an occasional that. five, I'd imagine. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's sort of the, the way the personnel committee was thinking about this and, and wanted to receive some feedback before they went too far down that road. Um, if it was something that the select board disagreed with or wanted to encourage them to think about other things. So if I look at like the COLA first, right? <clears throat> They're thinking of adding in because the average from last year is social security. That was, we've been using that all along in the formula, right? That one and then the Northeast Consumer Price Index. Um, because it's nice to have that be formulaic because that kind of pulls, it makes it easier to use, it pulls politics and things like that out of it. It's like we're working off of it, which is why we kind of wanted to come up with something like that. I guess my question is, is if they want to start pulling in other COLAs and like, and then was it the union adjustments? Th those are the three things they wanted to look at before making a recommendation on a COLA. I guess, like, what would be the mechanics behind that? Do you know what I mean? Because you need to have something consistent that you can rely on so that, like, if everybody in the committee changes or whatever, you know, or all the, you know, there's got to be a consistent mechanism and a way to apply that. Because it seems like there could be a lot of wiggle room. You know, looking at, like, in other words, you'd almost need a rule written down. If I'm going to look at other towns' cause, how do I do that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and I think it was looking at peer communities. I, I did hear some hesitation from some members of the committee to a formula, um, and, and the I believe the reason given for that hesitation was um, is is that how the colas for teachers and police are determined? Is it based on a formula or is it based on their ability to negotiate? Um, and then the other thing I heard was, well, this year the Social Security <laughs> cola is five point something percent. It is. So, it's a high, right, because of um, inflation and a few other... And, and is that... Um, is that necessarily helpful if, if, and I guess the point is that it, it can potentially moderate it in both ways. If, all, if communities yeah. are all saying, well, that's nice, we're still only giving 2%, just like we did last year. And yeah. Um, so, but yeah, no, we talked, we certainly talked about a formulaic approach. Um, and and I get from an economic perspective, I have some issues with the consumer price index getting the, th because, you know, to look at the other side of that, they always exclude food and fuel. And those are the two most wildly fluctuate. And I, they exclude it because it fluctuates and it can go very high. So they try to like round out the numbers and they don't include that. But to be fair, for most of us, food and fuel increases are the things that we feel the most and actually have the hardest hit. So, you know, I, I, get, I get that part of it, but, um, and, and because then you also have to make sure, right, if you're going to look at peer communities, which ones? In my mind, you have to work with the same com peer communities that you, we used as criteria for, you know, like these towns are our peers, you know, it, 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 through that thing. So you got to make sure you can't use another town in there, like a certain local quasi-government agency recently decided to tried to use, this was probably what, somewhere up in the last four years, decided, well, we didn't like the new Northeast Consumer Price Index, so we're gonna like double it or whatever. Or use some other, they used a different areas index. 
and I got a problem with that. You know, you can't pick and choose just because it doesn't look favorable for what you want. But <clears throat> that's just on the mechanics, because you got to have a process in there, otherwise it's open to way too much around. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to look at union colas, it depends on where they are in their contract. Right, there's a lot of That's already that decided, vary. right? If they yeah. in a five-year contract and they're getting 2% for the next five years, well, that's nowhere near. So they may one year try to catch up from that, having the lows, right. and have a very big bump because yep. they're not going to see this change. Right, because they kind signed of, a longer-term thing, right? right. They're not going to see this change that mirrors what's happening right now with Social Security. Right, that's the right, best. It could be a quick blip like that, and then right. But then, yeah. when they come out of their contract, they're gonna everyone. Their negotiation is gonna be. We didn't see that big jump. Right. So they're gonna get it. Kind of off cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just know a few years ago we. When we looked at the. Uh, Consumer price index, it was in the like zero point five. It was five. really low, right? Mm -hmm. There was almost and, no inflation. And, and, yep. And we had, according to our standards, we should not have been giving. We should be given like a point three five percent increase, and we ended up giving a two percent or right just because it was so low. And and I think that's what Crystal's saying. I I in. And it, and it's tough also if, if when you say well what are the what are, what are the union what do the union contracts say well I mean when a union signs a contract it's usually a th it can be three three, a to three five year years. contract five years, yeah. and Crystal is absolutely right mm -hmm. you know that first that first and it's all when you sign the contract it's all it's done in good faith but you may you may end up with a year where you know, you need really to stay even. You need a four, but you'd only negotiated a two. So guess what? I mean, you get paid the two, not the four. Right. And they make up for it when they. And, well, usually in negotiations, in my experiences with 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 unions, is you don't look ever look back on a contract. You always are looking forward. So you don't go back and say, "Well, you remember last year we or two years ago?" You usually don't say that. You usually say, usually. It's, you know, you're you're negotiating going forward, um, and never looking back because everybody knows when you negotiate that contract, it may be to your benefit or it may not be, right. and and you just you tr you try to be fair. I mean, not and sometimes people say equal. Well, it's hard sometimes to be equal, but you try to be fair, right. and that's what we to our employees that year when we we're at point zero something. Okay, so our. I mean, does that mean that the town needs to be hard when, if in the future we get a point zero three, and give give a point three cola, or do we <clears throat> do what's fair and give the two like we did, like we've done before? Right. So I'd I'd be careful before I I try to lock in, because at some point if you if you do lock it in, if if, it, if you're going to try to make it a union contract without having a union, then you have to be willing to take what it says, and that goes both ways. Well, exactly, right. And and to tell you the truth, from <clears throat> from a town's perspective, you know, when you would have a one year, when you're just looking at one year, year to year to year, it's different than looking at a three year contract. So you may be able, it you have more. So when you agree to two, two and two, it's both parties are taking a chance. Right. So and, and, and so I, I guess I, I, I do have I think if I'm not mistaken, we've always said we didn't want necessarily a step program. And and we have heard from some various and I, I think it's most important to pay your employees fair salaries. And we all need to take responsibility to ensure when we hire somebody, we hire that person at a true rate right, and not, not artificially low one. Not and, and, and just to get it passed through town meeting. Right. 
Right. And in three years later, he says, "Well, Chris, you're not paying that. You're not paying that person appropriate wage." But they've only been here three years. Yeah, but the wait. Look at the wage. Well, but that's the wage that you hired the person at three years ago, and and it was a good wage, and now it's not enough. So, so I think that's what we one thing that the personnel committee needs to address also is that when people are hired, that it's it's compared to a wage study, so that people are paid an appropriate amount when they come on. Right. And 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 I mean when we do when we talk town administrator, that's a chief of police, highway superintendent. That's one of the first thing we do. What what's the going rate for those positions? Sometimes a lot the other positions, there there's not that same that same oversight. It's more important that you hire the person and three years later you try to go get more money for that person. So. Um, Long, longevity bonuses again. I'd rather, I'd rather pay the people an appropriate wage than having them count on longevity bonuses. So then I don't know how that's done, but yeah. I, I mean, and and again, things things kind of change, kind of change rapidly. Salaries especially. I I think it's important that you pay pay people a fair wage. Right. If we have to look at if somebody has hit a. Spot where they can't make more money or something, then maybe you look at that structure of that as opposed to just you know paying out because they've been here. And, uh, and I also think it, I I also think that you have to be careful when you're comparing yourself to some other town. For instance, and I I, I don't know if this will happen. I hope it in a way I hope it does happen because it's it's good for all of us, but. Deerfield had a uh, medical or dispensary that says that they could generate what three point five million dollars a year for the town. Oh, when they're projected. Well, I, I mean, I don't, Jeff. We're not looking at anybody coming up with three point five million dollars a year for us, are we? Or even two point five? <laughs> we might know on Wednesday how much, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, not yet. But but so so I I so. You, you're not, everybody's everybody doesn't have the financial resources also and and there has to and there has to be a thing and an ability to pay has to enter into that equation, uh, equation also right we don't have a sales department like a private company where we can go and boost our sales up by 10 percent a year you know we don't have that kind of flexibility oh, we, do. Is, we do we oh, yeah. do we do <laughs> yeah. it's called it's called well, two and a half prop two and a half override but then you have to you're selling it to the you're selling it to the clients, which right. are the, the taxpayers in town, and are they willing to you know so so it's it's I mean it's I, I again I, I think the personal committee it's a very difficult it's a very difficult job when when you look at compensations, mm -hmm. and I also would say that whatever plan that we finally go with that you do have to have some type of um, evaluation program yeah. and if for no other reason evaluations and I, and I hope part of the evaluation program is a self-evaluation also so that and, and, it, and you can really use it as a tool right and and, 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 and if Jeff I'm going to pick on Jeff because he's he's but if Jeff does a self-evaluation and the board does an evaluation of him and and Jeff has things that he thinks he's wonderful at and we think he's not wonderful at it we have to understand why we think and he think like why what, what each, each other we each other think and understand because okay. some some place we're not communicating and that's the same thing with employees if, if you know if if your job is to plow snow and you think you're doing a wonderful job yet every resident in town thinks their mailbox is falling down that they're not doing a good job <laughs> Okay, how how do we convey that? And 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 it's just it's a, just a different level. But we need to have that evaluation. Does it does I mean, maybe it's a bad term, bad word evaluation. Yeah. Come, maybe we can come up with a different word for them. But some somehow we have to understand and and make sure that the goals of management and the goals of the employees are are aligned with one another. How, does that help you? And nobody ever likes doing those. I mean, that's just part for the. Thing. I mean, 
They're never fun, but... No. And but you do have to do them. You have to do them. I mean, that's what most companies... Twice a year we do them at our company. You do know? them four times. Four times. Well, we used to do them a lot more, but yeah. So what do you think, Jeffrey? I, I think that's helpful. Um, I think that... I, I heard you say that that the select board has fairly consistently said no steps and I'm I don't I, I don't yeah. know how the entire personnel committee I mean I'm assuming that, that that is in reference to the annual wage adjustment that that they're proposing is, yeah. is sort of analogous to a, to a step system right. right if it walks like a and it quacks like a it is a because it's a separate thing from the cola yes yep. yeah okay. and, and and but see that i guess that's the thing i i guess that's because you really have to look at what's an individual's total comp for the year do you know what i mean like in what's a de what's the definite why do you offer cola cost of living right it's right okay in the cost of living but adjustment. but if every but if you're if you're if if you're if we identified a wage scale, right, mm -hmm. and everybody's up to the midpoint or whatever yeah, the appropriate the, level the right now, because yeah. I think we are right. Everybody should be at the, at least the minimum. Well, I think well, we're at the, mid, the, I think I we're at the midpoint. Like to the midpoint, yeah. Yeah. So if yeah. if you're everybody's at the midpoint, what's the expectation going forward? Right. To stay at that midpoint or to go beyond the midpoint. So the expectation going forward on that is where you talk about the fair wage, right? Mm -hmm. Where I get evaluated, I'm a two. Yep. That keeps me below the mid range for that okay. pay. Yeah. I get evaluated and I'm a five. Mm -hmm. This gets me out of the mid range and a little closer to the high range of that job. Okay, so when does uh, the ability to pay come into that equation? Can, can somebody work themselves out of a job? Because the... Of, of salary. You mean hit the so, maximum in there. Yeah, so somebody may... I, I mean, you... Just for, for discussion, yeah. okay? Mm. If, if, if the town says that you want people in the middle... You, we want to be in the middle of the scale. We don't want to be the high end or the low end. We want to be in the middle. Okay? So, do we? Is, is there an aspiration that your highest paid person will be in the middle of that? So we may not be able to pay the top, top, of the, top of the scale for that position. And it's nothing against a person doing the job. We just may not have the ability to pay. There may not be the ability to pay that person or everybody. Let's say Town of Sunderland has every employee gets a five. Can we afford to pay the top of the pay Correct. scale for everybody? No. Yeah. I agree. I, I agree with, with the, that theory. Right. I agree with that concept, but I also I want to see that person who is above average make and we, we're not going to be talking millions here, but <laughs> no, definitely. to be able to make above average pay. Okay. Yeah, and that's where you tie in the compensation rather than just the evaluation putting a program or the, out the there review with no or whatever. Right. right. Versus right. So you have to be about. You're not going to just move to the top of your scale. Right. Just because, because. you've sat here for ten years. Right. In order. To get to the top of that scale, you have to perform a little better than right than average. <coughs> Bless you, rather than just hey, I showed up today. Right. Bless you. Right. I know what you're saying. I, I, I just think it's a it's an interesting discussion. It is it's because because and and that's because I think you kind of have to. Like from a competitive standpoint, you have to kind of look at it, you know, and you come up with a thing, all right, we want to be in the middle, let's say, you know. The, the thing, you have to balance it out between what you can afford and also not drifting behind 
yeah. so that, you know, you now, because, and hopefully, like, you know, and then, the, and I understand why the argument is there that, like, okay, we have the COA, but if you just only had the COA, then you could slowly drift down that way. And I get, you know, like in, in certain like private sector jobs, you have the ability to be promoted through different career paths. You know, in other words, like a, think of like a, 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 like a programmer. They can start off as a junior programmer, work right. their way up. To an associate, to a programmer, to a senior, exactly. to a lead. Right. You know, right. Or like a line tech or something like that. Yeah. You, know, you've got, you have a career path. And a lot of times in these types of jobs, you don't necessarily have that career path. It's just like you come in, here's the job, and that's it. So you have to strike that balance of trying to create some kind of career path as much as you can within the parameters of what's there. But you also, you can't structure it so that just by showing up and having a pulse and you're there. You're gonna max out at the pay. Right. But you may. You could. I, it I depends. Used to work, That's I the used thing. To work at a, I used to work at a place, and it was possible. And everybody was everybody was evaluated every. This was a private industry. Everybody was evaluated every year. Yeah. Okay. And it wouldn't be an, an and it was an hourly. It wouldn't be unusual for somebody to get a dollar an hour raise, and you're making twenty twenty five dollars an hour. So it was wasn't. It was at the time twenty years ago. It was it was good, very good money. But the owner of the company would say, you know, at, at every year, Tom, how has so and so made themselves more valuable to the company? And I would go, oh, he's, he's going to classes, does overtime, um, um, taking on new responsibilities, and I would go through the thing. Right. And and that and then there was the best best guy we had. Okay, and he was he was the best mechanic that we had. But he said, okay, Tom, what's, what did this guy do this year? Well, he's the best guy we have. Well, did he work more overtime? No, he don't work. We, we have to have him. Did he take any classes? Well, no, he doesn't want to travel to go to the, to the classes. So, you know, I mean, if something's local, he'll do it. And we go through it. And he says, well, has he made himself more valuable to the company this year? And it's like, well, I mean, by, you know, by being a good worker, yeah. And he says, okay, we'll do 50 cents, but he didn't get the buck and a half. So you, you can, you can get, you can get to a reach a point where you could, yeah. you're at the top of the scale. Yeah. And you see that even within like union groups, because now it's like, oh, we've got all these people that are hit the top. So now we want to come up with another step. And, and it, but that's a different yeah. conversation. Is it really? It, absolutely. Because the, the base concept is the same. You've well, got somebody who you've maxed out, and now we either let them sit there, or we give them some kind of increased compensation. In my mind, the root. Well, I haven't heard anybody saying that anybody hasn't changed. I haven't heard anybody saying that anybody's maxed out yet, Dave. No, I didn't say that. But conceptually, I, I'm saying maybe there is. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we've. I don't know if oh, we've got anybody sure. at the max. I don't know. I. I well, and, and also too, you have to expect that. Whatever you have as a target goal, you know, like say, okay, we want to have people in the middle, you still know that it's kind of like a, a scatter plot diagram. You're going to have most of your dots here, but you're going to have people scattered all around. Some are going to be lower, some are going to be higher. But all depends on but the turnover. That's just a snapshot in time. You know what I mean? We could have five people resign over the next year or two. You know, it varies. We tend to have less turnover. You know, we don't have a very high turnover right here. No, because I think I think there's there's more there's more to having certain employments. There's other thing in a compensation pack. Right. And, and and the only thing that we've always discussed is salary. We never talk about the other benefits that are offered. Oh, well, you need to look at total comp. And and and, and I'd love I'd love for the personnel committee to come back and say, hey, did you, you know, and and we. To talk about, you know, instead of instead of a pay raise, how what about increasing the contribution for insurance? Right, that's another thing you can look at. Yep. I, well, I love to have that. Or and and there's other things also, but but those are conversations that we should have. Now, 
if you increase your contribution for insurance, it may not affect everyone. No, right, because it all depends on each individual's personal situation. Status, situation. situation. Right, who carries the insurance in their exactly. household, things like that. Right. And depending on what, I mean, that could turn out to be a better monetary value if you do get it, depending on the increase in a given year. Do you know what I mean? Because you could be getting more covered. Who, who, who? It, it would usually or something like that helps the people on the lower, lower yeah. end of the pay scale. Right. And I'm I and when we upped it from fifty to fifty five percent a few years ago, I thought that was a great thing that we did. And we did that unsolicited. The, the right. board, the board, the board pushed for that on our own. Didn't come from personnel committee. Right. That was and, something we decided. Yeah. And and I thought it was one of the greatest things that we've done. It, it is and I think. And, and again, from negotiating with school contracts, what do you learn? That sometimes your, your aides are working for insurance, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And they get the worst job. I, in my opinion, they get, they get some of the worst jobs. Job. They get yeah. some of the worst jobs. And, 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 and the best thing that we could do was help them with it. And, you know, never mind the coal. That, I mean, that's appreciated. But but when you're looking at changing the insurance, that that to them was much more. That's more money in their pocket. Right. And that's a thing that keeps. I mean, you look at insurance increases; they've been going up Absolutely. quite a bit. All right. Jeff's good. I just wanted to add one thing, Tom. You asked about the ability to pay. Where does the town's ability to pay come in? And one of the interesting things that the state did a while back was they said, for, for managers, they basically said, all right, there's gonna be a 2.5% increase in our budget for manage, so non-union managers pay. Um, this is the dollar amount that, you know, we pass it at town meeting, and then between town meeting and the beginning of the new fiscal year, we go through the evaluations and we say, okay, here's what, so, the town would say, we're going to set the maximum increase at 3%, and then it's up to um, the, the managers to decide how that gets divvied up based on performance evaluations. This person gets 1%, this person gets 3 this person gets 2 and a half. And, but understanding that, okay, highway department, you get five thousand. You can increase salaries by five thousand dollars. How, how do you do it? Right, leave that up. And to then the that that way, we have the ability to be baked in when developing the budget, and we have the ability to adjust it. it yeah. So that, that's a, a way to attack that. How, how do you? I think as long as you have okay. a well recorded evaluation process set up. Only because that leaves, if you kind of just give. Right, you know, it's got to be a piece of paper pay. and okay. some right, check points. And it could get, you know, somebody might just, yeah. not, you know what, I don't like that person, so I'm giving them 1%. And, you know, I like my buddy over here, I'm going to give him 5%, even though he does less work than the other guy I don't like. Right. You want to avoid that. It, you know, it's hard. I mean, I mean it, you know. In my mind, the best way, the the way they work the best is you have a meeting at the beginning of the year and you set your goals and, and yeah. as many deliverables as you can for each goal. And then at the end of the year, you come back and you sit and you do a self evaluate. How did I do on my five goals? Right. And then you have the manager. How did I, how do I think this person did on the five goals? And then that's exactly what we do in our company. Yeah. yeah that's what um, we do also. But we have like, a set of goals that are handed down at the corporate level that everybody yeah. has. Yeah, and then to you have your personal them. goals. Yep. 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 And is it always perfect? Heck no. But at least there's something that's down, so that at least if somebody has a grievance, there's a process to follow, and you know, and because you really have to go out of your way to try to remove politics and personal stuff out of this as much as possible, and it's not easy. But that's why that's why we've stressed like with coming up with that formula because it's 
you know, it, it's a non-emotional set of numbers that you can look at to help evaluate. <clears throat> and like I was saying earlier, I have a problem. I, I don't think I think the consumer price index sometimes is not good because for most of us, you know, unless you're making large amounts of money, when you're suddenly shelling out a lot more money for gas to drive to work, that hits you. Or, you know, <clears throat> you go to buy like sugar, which is now so only in um, four pound bags when it used to be in five pound bags. So they get a double price increase because it's like you're getting a pound less product. We're charging you the same amount. Oh, and by the way, in two or three months or six months when you're not noticing, we're going to bump gonna up the price. 50 cents. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I get that. It's a balancing act, and you never, you know, it's... All right, you've got enough to talk about, huh? Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty so you got the easiest, you got the easy assignment. Did I? I'll tell you, like, easy, 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 easy. Because everybody has an opinion on this stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they do. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, do you want to add anything else? No, I'm good. We killed that, huh? Yeah, it's the, the horse is dead. <laughs> yeah, you put three select, select board members together and they can pontificate about this stuff forever. Yeah. All right, Jeffrey, we're going to move on. Okay. John's giving me the sign back there. He starts <laughs> Was he snoring? No, no. no. <laughs> he, he, his head starts like this and by he he's gets up on this. I said, okay, it's time to Yeah, yeah, yeah right. we understand, John. All right, new business, that's new business. Anything else on the new business? No. All right. Uh, updates, like board update, David? Speaking of negotiations, next. I think it's the 20 seconds our next apparently is our next uh union 38 meeting we just had our initial just before one. thanksgiving yes we I'm scheduled that hasn't gotten canceled yet usually uh, who knows okay. we, we we picked i want to say we set like three or four dates i think oh. to try to get them in but you know we know it's going to go into the new year so this will be the first meeting because the first one was the initial kickoff, you know, the setting of ground rules, that kind of stuff. Well, in the so old days, they used to go out for dinner. Did you go out for dinner, Dave? We don't go out for dinner, no. Did you go out for dinner? No, nope, we don't go out for dinner. That was way, I think, way I think back. people have brought snacks and pizza in on occasion. I think they went to Chandler's one one time. Uh, well, it's not there it's anymore. Not, it's not there no it's more. It's a pizza place. As a matter of well, fact, that, next... Yeah, he wouldn't, he wouldn't even go to the pizza place with grinders now, huh? Yeah, there you go. I don't even think they have grinders there now. Um, was that pizza? This pizza. No, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm oh, talking about Frontier. Yeah, Frontier. Yeah. Um, it's actually Monday, same night as I, but it starts at four, so. Okay, Dave, good. Well, it seems like you'll be at that for a while. Anything else, Dave? No. no. How about you? I went and toured 120 Main Street. Nice. How was that? It's a construction site. Um, Did you get dirty? <laughs> nah. I've walked, your boots. I've walked through more than one construction site in my lifetime. How's um, it coming along? Looking good? Yeah, so the house in the front looks great. Nice. They made an apartment on the first floor, two in the back. Say, yeah, I was going to say a few units in there, right? There's three there. Yeah. And then the ones in the back, it's it doesn't have a roof on it yet, but the walls are closed in. They're starting framing up. So was it spring schedule? I, I don't know what their exact schedule was. Are they supposed to be spring? Next spring or so? Or no, I think next like fall August. For fall. Yeah, yeah. By the time. Three months behind schedule. Are they? Okay. Yeah, that's about what I'd expect, I guess. <laughs> Given with material costs and, and supply chain problems. Yeah. I'm it's surprised not surprising. it's no longer. Yeah. yeah. It's not how surprising. Many, how many people were on the tour? Um, there were like six of us. Oh, good. Nice. Yeah, we were able to go on the first floor. We couldn't go up on the second or third floors, um, you know, to see the views. It's going to have beautiful views from yeah, especially the second in the back. and third floors. Yep, Even really once you get up high, because you're going to be kind of looking over everything, you know, at Sugarloaf and stuff. And it was still some fall color, so nice. you could kind of appreciate the views that they're going to have. Excellent. That's great. That's about it for me. That's it for you? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been talking to George about um, North Main Street and water. So if you can probably update us on that, huh? Um, like water drainage? I. So 
I, I don't have an update from what you know. Um, on Friday, with the heavy rains, there was uh, accumulation of rainwater and not draining where it was supposed to. So, um, George talked to the MassDOT engineer who was uh, available on Friday, and they walked around. Um, I talked to George today, and I said, so what was the response from MassDOT? And he said, well, they they need to bring it up the engineer chain um, and raise it. And so we are waiting for a response from MassDOT on whether or not it was designed properly and constructed to uh, design. That was my question. Like, is it so, not so draining to spec, or is the spec not good? I, yeah. or was it just that? I, I, was it draining anywhere good? Well, I was gonna say my street, my street drain was bubbling up. Yes, mine like was. Crazy. There were standing it was, water it was a very everywhere. High, right, it was a high rate of. I, I know after, after the rain stopped, it it went down. Yes, mm, yeah. I would think. Again, I'm not a civil, but I think it'd be advantageous to somebody to go out and maybe ask George if he could do this and just have a uh, have a uh, survey or take some elevations on the catch basins and compare them to what's on the, the plan and compare those elevations to what's on the plans well, I, uh, I'm I, sure there well let's just say this if anybody drives up North Main Street and you when you go over the manholes you go clunk clunk typically that means that somebody missed an elevation yeah, that that's my my thoughts. So, or if, 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 if they miss if, if they miss elevations on <clears throat> on the paving, what do you think they're going to miss elevations in mm -hmm. dirt yep. or grass? So, I I would just ask them if they if it just has somebody take some elevations. Can I ask a clarification? Yeah. Um, I would imagine that there would be a cost associated yeah. with that. Yeah. Is that okay for the town to absorb that cost, or sh because we want our own data, yes. or do we want? Okay. Uh, you, oh no! It, it, right now, it's us, us versus them. Yeah. And, and trust me, in long term, <clears throat> if we spend if we spend a thousand dollars now, that thousand dollars is going to probably save us a hundred thousand dollars later yeah. down the road. So. When you look at what it'll cost to fix something, yeah. Oh yeah, and, and I mean, and again, when you <clears throat> on, on the plans they have, <coughs> they have elevations, and we need to ensure that the the elevations are are, are appropriate. Well, and especially when you think like it's one thing for it to happen now, but when the stuff, it, which it will happen, especially come March, where you have it and then it freezes up. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. Yeah. George, George and I. That's what George and I talk about, and yeah. and that's. And and there was there was puddles in the sidewalk. There should not be puddles in the sidewalk. Yeah. Yep. I I mean that's a that's 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 a no no. So. Yep. And and that's and I think that's that's an easy. Th but my my guess is. The state is about what two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Shy of funds because they screwed up over on routes five and ten, so I don't think the <laughs> going to make up for they're it be, somewhere They're going to be doing the right thing over here because they're going to make up two hundred and seventy something thousand dollars. So yeah. we'll probably be on the short end of the stick. That why I think it's important that we get elevations that we yeah. and 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 if we have not and if we have numbers and we can talk to them from a, a it says look the 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 print says one hundred twenty four point seven feet and you have one hundred twenty eight feet. So how if you're four feet higher, how, how do you expect it to dry right. or, you, can, you know, to drain? Right. So. You get numbers, you have an educated discussion. I, I, I think it's easy. Yep. I just wanted to make sure yeah, that, just, I, I, yeah. that we should be doing it and we don't want and, and, to. And, and, and we had talked about an elm tree yes. on South Main Street. Yes, we did. And Dr. Kane came down with his class. He came down with his class and I will not claim to understand exactly what he did, but he investigated the tree. And I think I, in my mind, it's like a sonograph. It's the yeah. density of the wood. And um, what he said is there may be some possible decay. He couldn't say for certain based on the readouts. 
um, and recommended that we hire a professional arborist oh, to yeah. take a look at the roots. He said there was some fungal growth, but he and his students um, weren't going to dig to actually find the roots and find out how damaged they were. So it's the one by the millstone. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, so basically, the the elm tree across from the millstone was there was a a, a concern that the the tree was past its life expectancy. Yeah. Um, there's we have a professor that lives in town that's a certified arborist, teaches students. Jeff contacted them. They came, he came in with his entire class. Hmm. They kind of made a little study out of it. That's good. And there's a good chance it may not have to be chopped down. <clears throat> and and the consulting with a professional arborist would help us um, identify what has to be done to maintain that tree. So. And again, we don't have too many. We don't have too many elms left in town. And at least two, right? Three. Those are third. Well, the we, on town property. property over here, yeah. On town property. Yep. So we're we're going to uh, get an arborist, but it doesn't look like it has to be chopped down right now. But it was going to be chopped okay. down this fall time. But it looks like it's it's okay. Yep. So yep. Cool. we'll get that. And then we also <clears throat> there was another resident on South Main who had a question about a tree on town property in front of his property. So I asked George to say, hey, are there any other trees you have concerns about? If we're gonna have an arborist come out and take a look at a couple, we might as well get, uh, uh, right. you know, maybe save some travel Makes costs sense. of bringing them out a couple of times. So just trying okay. to. So, all right, town administrator updates. Yep, just a, a couple of quick things. Um, we had the entire town uh, proper uh, real estate properties reevaluated this year um, the state gave us preliminary approval for the values that, that were determined um, there is going to be a public disclosure period from November 17th to November 23rd so that's starting Wednesday I believe tomorrow the, the values will be available both on the website and in town hall but certainly by the 17th um, and that's the public's opportunity to take a look at the valued land and if they disagree with um, the valuation that that's their uh, time to appeal um, and then once we get the final approval we can um, hold the tax classification hearing and so i think that just to give the state a couple days, you know, the 23rd is the day before Thanksgiving or two days before Thanksgiving, I think. I think so, yeah. um, and so the state needs to approve it. They probably won't approve it by before the 29th. Tuesday. And it okay. needs to be approved before we post the hearing. So in my head, I'm tentatively planning for the December 6th meeting for the tax classification hearing. Okay. Um, then uh, wanted to remind people that Wednesday evening, um, Gracious Greens is having their community outreach meeting via Zoom. Um, that, uh, that information is on our website and news and announcements, how to join the Zoom. We put the presentation up today that they're gonna be presenting at the meeting. Uh, that's the public's opportunity to ask questions. I think there's an email address on the website if you want to submit questions ahead of time. Uh, but if you have interest in learning more about the potential cannabis company in town, um, Wednesday night is a good opportunity to meet them. And what time is that, Jeff? Does that is at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. And then this Friday, there is a vaccination clinic at the elementary school from 1.30 to 5.30 that's People ages five and above, um, adults can be taken to, residents. Um, I think the idea is to help get the younger people who weren't eligible until recently vaccinated, but it is open to the public. So if you're interested, that information's on the website as well. You need to register in advance. Um, if you have trouble finding the information, you can always call and we can um, help you register. Or if you don't have 
access to a computer, I think it's an only an online system. So it could certainly help with that. Um, second to last thing, just a reminder about the housing survey, which is due uh, November 30th. It's available on the website. It's available in uh, here in the town office building. I think we have some surveys available at the library and the post office as well. Um, but that's really going to help us update our, our housing plan. Um, so if you have the time, it's not too many questions, um, and we would greatly appreciate it. And then the last update I have is just that last week we interviewed five candidates for the South County Senior Center director position. Um, we are interviewing one more on Wednesday, and then we uh, hope to have the search committee's recommendations to the Board of Oversight and the Hiring Authority, which is the Deerfield Select Board, shortly thereafter. Um, and, and schedule final interviews with both of those groups. And I, I think we talked about it previously, but the search committee is made up of the town administrators from Deerfield, Waitley, and Sunderland, as well as representatives from each of the community's councils on aging. Those are my updates. Good. Good candidates? I think we have some strong candidates, yes. Good. Excellent. Okay, anything else? Any questions from the uh, Zoom, Zoom? Zoom room? Okay, no, I don't see any hands up. Gonna, it, that, it is different doing that, you know that? You, you don't, you don't want to miss that. Um, okay, so have a meeting next week? Um, yes, have a meeting next week. Are we going to... Do an executive session this evening if you want to um sure we can okay yep all right so we are going to go um into executive session um we will not take any votes in that executive session so after that at besides going coming out of the executive session we will vote on that <clears throat> um, so at this time, I'd like to, pursuant to Master in Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, Paragraph 6, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of re real estate if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body, and that is so declared. So, Jeff, do you do a roll call vote, please? Sure. Uh, Mr. Pierce? Aye. Ms. Drake Tremblay? Aye. Mr. Feigen Kevitz? Aye. So we will um, be recessing to the executive session and we will readjourn, re, re, uh, uh, we'll, we'll come back in the session to vote us out only. Okay. So let's 7 30.